So the fillet command in Fusion actually has quite a bit of functionality, one of them being tangency weight. So let's take a look at how we can take a standard fillet to a more advanced fillet. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the fillet command and all of the options that you have inside the fillet command. So typically when you create a fillet, you get a nice rounded fillet on an edge. Uh, but there are a lot of options in the dialogue that we're going to be covering today. One of them being tangency weight. And you'll notice when I grab the blue arrow, it changes the radius of the fillet. But there's also this other arrow here. And as I drag on that, it's changing the tangency weight of the fillet. And what this basically does is it tells the fillet how strong should the fillet be from the other surfaces. So for example, you'll notice if I do the tangency weight of two, it's doing a long uh, tangency. So it's going from this surface and it's staying pretty straight. And then it does a tighter curve and then it goes kind of straight up to this surface here. If we change it to the other direction, uh, which is the lower end, which is 0.1, there's still a slight curve here, but it's doing a, a much tighter tangency. So instead of a long, gentle slope, it's doing a very short slope. And then the same thing here, very short slope here. So it's keeping the curve pretty much straight along the fillet. So by default, it's usually set to one. So if I set this to one, it's equal all the way along but you can change the weight anywhere from 0.1 all the way up to two. And that will give you different results. So let's take a look uh, at where you could use this in a real world example. Um, I want to create a variable chamfer along this edge. Well, unfortunately there isn't a variable chamfer option, but by using the fillet weight or the tangency weight, uh, in the fillet command, we can kind of simulate a variable chamfer. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to create a fillet on this edge. And because I have tangent chain selected, it's going to select the whole edge. But I'm also going to change this radius type from constant to variable. And what this allows us to do is to have different sizes at the start and finish. So for example, I'll say, let's start at 0.2 and let's end at 0.3. And so we can see this is a slightly smaller radius and it ends at a larger radius. Now this is the default tangency weight of one. So it's keeping that nice tangency all the way throughout this fillet. But if I change the tangency weight all the way up to, or down to 0.1, you can see how it almost looks like a chamfer and it looks like a variable chamfer as it goes along that edge. Now, it's not a real chamfer. There's still a little bit of you know a curve right here, but it kind of simulates the look of a chamfer. So I'll go ahead and do that again on this edge here. Let's do the fillet. We'll change that to variable. I like to start to drag to kind of see which one's the start, and which one's the end. So let's do 0.2. Um, here's a neat little trick. If I hit these three little dots, it remembers the last entries that I've entered. So I can do 0.3. In fact, I can do the same thing for the tangency weight. I'll do the 0.1. And we get, again, the, kind of that flat surface. And so we get kind of the, the look of a variable chamfer um, on these edges. Here's another example of where you could use tangency weight. So I have like this um, elliptical extrusion and I want to create a fillet on from this edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say fillet. And let's just do maybe like a one inch radius. And you can see how it creates an, a nice smooth transition along this flat surface up to this curved surface here. And maybe I'll go ahead and add in um, a small um, fill it on both sides like so and that doesn't look too bad but I'm not overly happy with kind of how that looks it kind of I don't know it looks kind of bulgy right here it's hard to explain let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and maybe play around with the tangency weight and see if we can get a nicer looking result so I'm going to do the same thing radius of one um, but I'm going to change the tangency weight 
So as I start to drag this, we can see how we can change the tangency weight. And I want to do something maybe like, let's try 1.75. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep this a little bit flatter on this surface and a little bit flatter on this surface and create the nice transition like so. And if we look at it kind of from the front, we can kind of see how it looks just a little bit nicer. You know, it kind of climbs up that wall instead of, you know, to me, this looks like it's sticking out a little bit further. Let's go ahead and add in those other fillets on here real quick. So I'll do the 0.125 on both of those. I'll say OK. And I just think aesthetically this looks a little bit nicer than this one does over here, for example. Um, and so I know it's minute, but it just makes a little bit nicer looking fillet in this case, I think. Um, and again, you could come in and change that um, tangency weight, maybe try like 1.5 or something like that. And you can kind of see how that automatically updated accordingly. So give the tangency weight a, a try and see how you can get some nicer looking fillets, especially in interesting situations where you've got like curved surfaces going to flat surfaces or even other curved surfaces. Here's another example um, where we're going to talk about curvature. Now this model looks a little bit different. That's because I have zebra analysis turned on. This basically allows you to kind of see the curvature of how one surface connects with another surface. Um, and you can see I have that over here in my analysis folder here. I can turn that on or off. We'll go ahead and leave that on for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and add in a fillet. Uh, let's do a radius of one and I'll just go ahead and say okay and what you see here is that the zebra stripes are lined up with each other which is good you want these zebra stripes touching each other uh, that means that these surfaces are connected uh, and they it's a smooth transition same thing here you can kind of see what that looks like here you'll notice these look a little bit nicer because we're kind of going from a cylindrical you know round surface to a cylindrical ish surface here so you see the nice transition but this one looks a little bit more sharp and that's because we're kind of going from you know a round or cylindrical surface to a very flat surface and what that means is if we were to manufacture this you might see this edge especially if this was you know a very reflective material uh, you would probably see this transition and this is where one of the options in the fillet command can make this look a little bit nicer. You'll notice right here it says tangent, if I, and it's a G1 surface. If I click on that, there's the option for curvature, and that's a G2 surface. So I'm going to go ahead and click curvature and watch what happens to these zebra stripes down here. So you can see how they look much nicer. They're not quite so sharp. There's a smoother transition. And what it basically does is kind of like what the tangency weight option does. It just smooths out the transition from the flat surface to the fillet. In fact, if we look at it from the front, I'm going to kind of zoom up here just a little bit. Let's compare tangent. So you'll notice this edge here and then it kind of comes down like so. Watch this area as I change it to curvature. You can see how it kind of drops down a little bit further. So it's kind of extending this tangency here before it starts to do the curve. Same thing down here with this flat surface. You can kind of see nice even curvature right here. And when I change it to the curvature option, it slopes and becomes flatter for a longer period of time. And that's how we get this whoops, nicer transition. Sorry, it zoomed out. <laughs> get this nicer transition from the flat surface to the curved surface. So that is this curvature option inside the fillet. The next option we have is a cord length. So I have a cylinder on this angular face. If I were to come in here and create a fillet, let's just say you know, 0.75, you'll notice it looks a little bit taller here on this end, or these, these two ends here, and it looks a little bit narrower down here. And that's because it's doing what's called a constant radius. And because it's on this angle, it, it's not equal all the way along. 
If I click on this radius type, I get this option for chord length. And you can kind of see in the icon, it shows this arrow going between the top and the bottom of the fillet. And what that means is it's going to keep an equal length from this point here to this point here all the way along the fillet. So I'm going to go ahead and change chord length and you can see how the fillet updated accordingly and how it looks even all the way along. And now I can come in, specify, I want that to be 0.75 and we get a nice looking fillet all the way along. So that is the chord length option under the radius type. And the last option I wanted to talk about in the fillet command is the setback option. And here's kind of a, an example of where this will come into play. So I have this shape here and you'll notice I've got some vertical faces and then I got some angular faces. And if I were to come in here and add in a fillet and let's just do um, 0.2 you'll notice that this edge here looks a little bit wider than this edge here, and it creates kind of an interesting intersection here, uh, where it almost looks like it's kind of bulging out a little bit. And you might say, well, why is this fillet smaller than this fillet? Well, it's, it's really not, it's, they're all 0.2, but because these faces are angled back, this looks smaller. Okay, it has to be because of the angled faces. And so this kind of makes this intersection here look a little bit weird. Well, under this corner type, you'll notice it says rolling ball or setback. Okay, so let me talk about the rolling ball really quick. And here's an example of what rolling ball means. So in this example, when you're creating a fillet, you can almost imagine like you put a whole bunch of like caulking or something like that along this edge. And then you take your radius ball, so in this case like a 0.2 radius ball, and you're going to squish and you know smooth all of that caulking along. And this ball is going to touch that face and that face as it drags along. It's going to smooth that caulking out, and that's how it creates these fillets. So again, imagine a whole bunch of caulking right here. It's touching this face, it's touching this face. As I drag that along, it's smoothing that caulking out and that's creating this nice little fillet. And that's what's called the rolling ball method. You know, if I were to drag this up, it would create that fillet there. So as it's going along over here, it's rolling along that face, it's rolling along that face and it's smoothing that fillet out. Same thing with this face and this face here. So that's why you get that, that result. Well, I wanted to get a different style and that is using the um, setback option. So let's go ahead and edit these fillets and I want to change um, the style to setback and I'm going to go ahead and add in these edges and you'll notice how I get a different result. And let me go ahead and add in this last edge here and you'll notice the different result that we get. It's almost like it's creating like a surface patch connecting all of these fillets together versus the rolling ball method that you see here. So these are the two different options that you have for the corner type. So depending on what style you want, you can choose rolling ball or setback. So that was just a quick high level overview look at some of the options in the fillet menu. Um, again, play around with the tangency weight on some of your fillets if you're trying to get a nicer looking transition, especially on like curved surfaces or complex surfaces. You might get a nicer result by changing the tangency weight or even changing the curvature style like I showed between tangent and curvature. So give these options a try on your next project and thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.